Located in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, over 6,000 miles from the continental United States, is a massive and dangerous vault with some of the most contaminated radioactive material on Earth. The tomb on Ruined Island, as it's often called, contains the debris of 43 nuclear bomb tests conducted by the U.S. on the Inuitak Atoll of the Marshall Islands, as well as 130 tons of radioactive soil shipped from the Nevada test site. Already, cracks can be seen on top of the dome, and chunks of broken concrete rest in black water, accumulating at its base. As sea levels rise, the entire tomb now threatens to crumble into the ocean. Reduced Nuclear Testing By the late 1940s, nuclear testing was already increasingly being perceived as a public health threat. Concerns continued to grow until the 1956 presidential election when ending all nuclear testing was debated in U.S. politics and safety from radiation was adopted as a key policy. By June of the same year, the National Academy of Sciences was calling for new exposure limits to radiation, which the Atomic Energy Commission agreed to. Yet the nuclear test projects Operation Plum Bob, Project 58 or 58A, and Operation Hardtack 1 were already in the making. Operation Plum Bob consisted of 29 explosions at the Nevada test site and was the biggest and longest test series to take place in the continental United States. Project 58 or 58A and Operation Hardtack 1 were scheduled to follow, but changes with Project 5858A and developments in the Soviet Union changed the testing landscape significantly. In December of 1957, one of the four Project 5858A tests went terribly wrong, producing an unexpected 500-ton nuclear blast that delivered low levels of radiation to the city of Los Angeles in the form of a radiation fallout cloud. Public alarm led President Eisenhower to demand that the Operation Hardtack 1 test scheduled to follow be shorter and more limited to fewer than 25 shots. On the other side of the world, the USSR was also pushing for a joint moratorium on nuclear testing, having felt public pressure themselves over nuclear proliferation and rising global radiation levels. In fact, in July of 1958, President Nikita Khrushchev met with President Eisenhower to discuss the technicalities and negotiate a path towards ending nuclear testing. When President Eisenhower announced the resulting ban that was scheduled to begin on October 31st of that same year, American scientists begged for Operation Hardtack 1 to be expanded before testing was halted. Their pleas were heard, and the number of tests was significantly increased. Operation Hardtack 1 Between 1946 and 1962, the United States conducted extensive nuclear bomb tests on, over, and in the Pacific Ocean, using the Marshall Islands as primary testing ground. Over a hundred bombs were detonated, with the largest test series, Operation Hardtack 1, beginning in 1958 and producing 35 blasts that totaled 35.6 megatons. These tests were performed by Joint Task Force 7, a combination of 19,100 people, both military elements and civilian workers, from the Department of Defense and the Atomic Energy Commission. More nuclear weapons were launched in the Pacific during this operation than there had been in the tally of all previous explosions in the Pacific. Aside from seeking to gather as much data as possible before the moratorium on testing, these tests were intended to provide more information on how to develop superior nuclear weapons. Three tests were conducted in the atmosphere, with the intention of studying how nuclear blasts would affect materials and electronics, as well as to measure the energy released in the forms of output. The first of these tests, Yuka, was carried out close to Inuitak Atoll, while the other two, Teak and Orange, were relocated further away to Johnston Island after it was feared the tests would be so bright that they would cause retinal damage to the native islanders. When Teak was detonated, it provoked the first man-made electromagnetic pulses at high altitude, seen as an aurora visible all the way from Hawaii. Radio communications shut down all across the Pacific, with Hawaii experiencing a two-hour blackout and Australia a long nine-hour blackout. Other Hardtack 1 tests were performed underwater and from barges on the ocean surface to see how much explosions could damage Navy boats. Most of these were performed at Inuitak because the bottom of the sea was relatively uniform in that area, which allowed for ships to be secured to the sea floor. During these tests, it was observed that when bubbles formed from the heat of the explosion burst after quickly cooling down, the water rushing back into the cavity became part of a, quote, radioactive pool of highly concentrated radioactive fallout. Sensors that studied the explosions were placed on everything from target boats to balloons. Four more hardtack tests were performed on the ground of the atoll itself. Cactus, Kinsei, Fig, and Koa. These tests sought to measure the amount of radioactive earthen materials cast into the atmosphere. The cactus test was carried out on May 6, 1958, detonating 18 kilotons at a northern point of Runet Island. The 350-foot-wide crater left behind by cactus would eventually come to serve as the location for the radioactive tomb. The cloud from the blast reached as high as 19,000 feet, 
5.79 kilometers, with the fallout tested by rockets and B-57D and WB-50 aircraft. Kinsei and Fig were also conducted at the center of Runit, while Koa was tested on and completely obliterated the smaller island of Dridrobui. Cleanup As testing from Operation Hardtack 1 wrapped, the U.S. Defense Nuclear Agency began an eight-year-long cleanup program to deal with the radioactive fallout. Unfortunately, the U.S. Congress did not allocate the necessary funds for a full decontamination program that would have made the atoll habitable again, and the preferred option for disposing of nuclear waste, deep ocean dumping, was forbidden by treaties and regulations. And radioactive material was not all that the U.S. had to dispose of. For Operation Speckled Start in 1968, the Army tested Staphylococcal enterotoxin B, one of the most toxic bacterial agents that was tested primarily for weaponizing. The agent causes inflammation and release of cytokine, which affects the immune system. Common consequences of exposure are toxic shock, asthma, nasal polyps, and atopic dermatitis. The atoll had been sprayed with the chemical, Ground Zero being Lojois Island, with a single test potentially reaching 926 and a half square miles. Results from these tests established a potential 30% casualty rate. The U.S. conducted about a dozen experiments with chemical weapons such as this one. Without the necessary funds to carry out a complete cleanup of the mess they left behind, the U.S. instead looked into a temporary solution. Over $600 million was allocated to relocate the local native communities that were threatened by the dangerous radiation. It was further decided that a containment chamber would be built to hide a significant portion of the remaining nuclear and biological waste. Runet Dome to begin work on the dome, American service people scraped off three to five inches of radioactive soil from the islands and mixed it with 130 tons of contaminated irradiated soil shipped from the Nevada test site. Plans called for dumping the slurry of contamination inside the crater left by the cactus explosion. According to the Defense Nuclear Agency report titled The Radiological Cleanup of Inuitak Atoll in 1981, quote, after much consideration, the director of the Defense Nuclear Agency decided in early 1975 that the only generally acceptable method for disposing of contaminated debris and soil from the Inuitak cleanup project was by mixing it with cement and placing it in recoverable storage in La Crosse and, if necessary, cactus craters. In order to develop the formulas for the soil-cement mixtures and the slurry of waste, the U.S. called on members of the Army Corps of Engineers' Waterways Experiment Station to assist the mission. With the limited funds allocated, the U.S. only managed to thoroughly clean three of the 40 islands. And Yebi, which served as a residential island for a little over half of the Inuitak population, was not among those cleaned. The crater itself was sealed with concrete, resulting in the Runet Dome, often referred to as the Tomb. With a diameter of 115 meters, or 377 feet, it holds an estimated 3.1 million cubic feet of radioactive waste, including amounts of plutonium-239 that would be lethal if they ever escaped their confines. The size of this massive dome covers the equivalent of 35 Olympic swimming pools. Resettlement of the northern part of the atoll was cancelled due to rising costs, but in 1972 the U.S. started extending invitations for displaced residents of Inuitak to return to their islands for the first time. In the 1980s, as the U.S. departed the Marshall Islands, hundreds of people flocked back to them. In the report published by the Defense Nuclear Agency, it stated that unfortunately, quote, if there was an evident shortcoming in the construction portion of the project, it was in the quality control standards and procedures for the cactus crater container. Disturbingly, it's been expressed by scientists that there is also an interest in collecting data on the effects of radiation on people, which may have played a part in the relocation strategies. In fact, industrial hygienist for the Atomic Energy Commission, Merrill Eisenbud, stated, quote, While it is true that these people do not live the way that Westerners do, civilized people, it is nonetheless true that they are more like us than the mice climate change, and the ticking time bomb. The Runet Dome has been subject to much controversy in recent times, as it was never meant to be a permanent solution, and weathering due to climate change has begun to form cracks in the dome. The floor of the dome was never sealed with concrete, and high tide now regularly reaches the base and penetrates underneath. Michael Gerard, founder and director of the Sabin Center for Climate Change Law, stated in a Los Angeles Times article that, quote, more than any other place, the Marshall Islands is a victim of the two greatest threats facing humanity, nuclear weapons, and climate change, and that, quote, the United States is entirely responsible for the nuclear testing there, and its emissions have contributed more to climate change than those from any other country. The government of the Marshall Islands made a compact with the U.S. in 1986, establishing that the former would receive $2.3 billion to resolve property and health damages that would liberate America from any more liability claims. 
However, at the time, the United States withheld vital information about the extent of radiation and the fact that it had detested biological weapons from the Marshallese people and government. Furthermore, American courts and Congress have refused to allocate the funds, with only $4 million being paid. Finally, a 2013 report from the American Department of Energy found that nuclear waste in the soil and lagoon around the Runet Dome had a greater concentration of radioactivity than the dome itself, since the cleaning operation had removed a mere 0.8% of nuclear waste in the atoll. As for the Runet Dome, even those who built it had little faith in the project. Within the tomb, workers are said to have left behind a small monument. If the dome were ever to collapse, the world might see a sculpture of a middle finger, known as the Runet Salute. <laughs>